So hi everyone, my name is Meera. I am an outreach intern uh, with Fedora and I'm a part of the design team. Marie Norden, the FK, uh, is my mentor. Uh, so this talk is going to be about designing Fedora badges in Inkscape. And I'm going to start with a demo where I'll design a badge and share some tips that I've picked up in the last five months. So this talk is for anyone who is interested in design, contributing to the badges team, or learning about Inkscape. I will also be conducting a hands-on badges design workshop in about four, four hours. So if after this talk you would like to test drive your learnings, do join me for the workshop. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat box. Uh, I don't think there is a notification, but I will keep on checking it periodically. Okay, so let's start. Oh, hi, Shraddha. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. And for a moment, I think, yep, there we go. So you can double click here to maximize this video so that this area is in focus, right? Okay, so what we are going to do today for the purpose of this demo, we are going to design an events badge. So with specifically designing a badge that all of you will get, we are going to design the nest with Fedora attendee badge. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set up the environment and collect all the resources we need. Right. So the first thing you do when you're making a batch is you download the template. And this is the badges website. And you can go here and look at all the previous badges. So I'm going to talk more about this website in my workshop later. So if you're interested, do join me there. Right. So I'm just going to visit the badge index. OK, so here you can see there are different types of badges. And today we're going to do an event patch. So I'm going to scroll down to the event category. I'm going to download a template from here. So I'm going to use an existing badge and modify the artwork so that we can use it for the badge. I would suggest using a badge that is pretty new so that you know the design is up to date and there's a higher chance you will find the SVG. So let's see. I'm going to use this, the Ohio Linux Fest 2019. Since this is 2019, it's pretty recent. Um, you can use this one also if you want. This I think this, uh, this one was made in the past two or three months. So this is also pretty recent. I'm going to use this one. And if you click on the badge, So this will open the batch details. And if you go to the ticket, you can download the SVGs from here. I will do this in detail in the workshop. So uh, right now, I'm just, I have it here. Right. So I've already downloaded it. And after you open the SVG, this is Inkscape. I've opened it in, in Inkscape, for those of you who don't know. And uh, this is what it looks like when, it, when it's open. Okay, I'm going to check if there are any messages. Oh, hi, everyone. Okay, great. So, so the first thing we do um, when we're designing a badge is we'll set up a palette. So if you have, if you have uh, not set up a Fedora palette, this is not what you're going to see by default. By default, this is the palette you're going to see. So if you're going to be designing badges, it's important that you set up the palette. It's easier for you that way. And it ensures that all the badges that are made have a consistent style. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the palette. So I'm just going to go to this URL. This is the docs project. 
so the docs for the badges project so you will find all the resources you need right here uh, if you don't have Inkscape, you can install Inkscape. Uh, here are the links. So right now we're going to download the palettes, right? So if you click on this, this is the basic color palette, which is the requirement. So this is the GPL file. You'll see a bunch of hex codes here, and these are the RGB values. So to download this, so this is a GIMP palette file. So download, to download this, just right click, save link as, and so, okay, so we have to save. So this is now a GPL file. So we have to save this in a specific folder. And this is the folder. So this is for Windows. You can find the uh, folder. You can find this palette, Inkscape palettes in your um, users. And then you go to app data, roaming, Inkscape, and then you go to palettes. For other OSs, you can look it up. It's very easy. Um, you can just search uh, and you can find where you have to save your GPL files. So I've already saved all these palettes. And after you do that, just restart Inkscape if it's already open and you will see the app option here and you can change it here. Okay, so we have now set up the palette. So this next step is to import graphics. So we are going to design the Nest with Fedora Identity Pack. So of course, we're going to use the Nest logo. So I'm going to import the SVG here. I will import or control I. And I'm going to download the Nest logo. Sorry, I'm going to import it. I've already downloaded it. You can find it in the design repo and the ticket. So, or you can just ask anyone in the design team, they will guide you to it if you're looking for specific logos or artwork. So there we go. So now we have set up our environment successfully, and now we can start with designing the batch. I'm just gonna check quickly if there are any questions. Okay, great. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna reuse this to fit here. So I'm going to get rid of the background. Since this is an SVG file, you can easily edit it. So all you have to do is you have to ungroup. So this is a collection of objects which are grouped together. So I'm just going to ungroup this. You can also use the shortcut Control Shift T. Sometimes you have to do it two, two to three times depending on how many times it's grouped. So as you can see, we now have all of these objects individually. We can select them. So put that back there and we do this and we have removed the background. So you can delete it at this point. Uh, we are going to use this later. So I'm just going to keep this here. It doesn't matter because this is the page, like this area right here, this is our canvas. So anything that is not on the canvas um, will not interfere with the final PNG if you export it correctly. That is, so I'm just gonna un I'm just gonna group it again. So, a tip to quickly select a lot of objects is to drag and select, and anything that is within this bounding box right here will be selected. So, let's see if I do it only this, even though it's touching the cloud, it didn't select it. So anything that is completely inside the bounding box will be selected. So you might not think this is a pretty big deal, but when you have a lot of objects, uh, this comes in really handy. If you Because sometimes there are a lot of objects placed close by, so all you have to do is make sure that it's not in the enclosing box. Right, so I'm going to group it, and we are good to go. So now I'm going to resize it so that it fits here. Uh, and the thing is, when you're resizing objects, make sure that you lock the aspect ratio right here. Because if you don't, this is what's going to happen. And we do not want to squish this little word. We do not want to squeeze it. Especially with logos, you have to be careful to not um, basically deform them in any way. And even general artwork doesn't look good when it's squished or squeezed. So just 
click this lock icon and there you go right so i'm just gonna resize it i think that's pretty good yeah so the next step is oh okay so these are my notes. I made them here so that I don't have to switch back and forth. I'm just going to drag this off the canvas. You can delete it. You might use it later. So yeah. Now, the thing is, I want to put this logo in the center of the badge. So I can either eyeball it, which is not going to be accurate at all, or I can maybe use grids so I can set up grids and try to measure it. But again, that is not going to be very accurate. Thankfully, we have a pretty good tool here, which is called the Align and Distribute tool. So the shortcut is Shift, Control, and A. And you have a bunch of different options here. So as you can see, you can select the context view where you want to how you want to basically align the object. So you have a couple of different options. You can align it to the page, to the last selected object, the biggest object. And after that, you have a lot of different options. So you can align the vertical centers, the horizontal centers, the top edges, the bottom edges. So this is going to make your job really simple and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object, then I'm going to select this shape right here. This is the center of the badge. I'm going to select this and I'm going to align the horizontal and the vertical axis. There we go. Okay, so this object right here, this represents the center of the badge. Some of you might ask why we did not center it to the page. And the thing is, the center of the page is not the same as the center of the badge. Because if you look carefully, there is a slight shadow here on the bottom. So what it does is it raises the center of the badge a couple of pixels above the center of the page. And oh, it's a very small difference, but it's enough to make a difference, right? Uh, so. I'm going to undo it. There we go. So make sure that if you're aligning objects, align it either to either to this shape, or you can align it to the ring, or you can align it to the white badge shape. But make sure that you do not align it to the page because of the shadow. Okay. So now that we have aligned it, what's the next step? Let's see. Ah, the set clip. Okay. So there is this really awesome feature in Inkscape. And I'm going to show you what it does before I explain what it is, because it's easier to explain it, easier to show it than to explain it. OK, so this is the background that I had earlier. Let's say, for example, I wanted to put up a little nice sky sort of color here for the board, maybe. Maybe. And I want it to be on the top half. Now, how do I make sure that we have this correct badge space shape right here? How do I do that? There's a pretty handy tool, and that is called Set Clip. So, what it's going to do is Set Clip is going to wait, actually. So, This is what's going to happen. Now I'm going to undo it and explain it step by step. So it helps if you imagine the shape, the shape that you want as the cookie cutter. So this is your cookie cutter right here. And this is your roll of cookie dough. And you want to cut this in the shape of the cookie cutter. So what you do is you duplicate this object because this object is going to be used up when you are cutting the cookie. So I'm going to press Control D 
and it's going to duplicate right on top of the original object. You can also right click and select duplicate here. Okay, um, so a couple of people ask why we use duplicate instead of copying and pasting. And the thing is in Inkscape, when you are copying and pasting an object, let's see, I have copied it to my clipboard and if I paste it, it's going to paste where my mouse pointer is. So you see, it's going to paste it wherever my mouse pointer is. And the thing is, you want the object to be on, you want the duplicate to be on top of the object. So that's why it's, you should use the duplicate tool instead of copying and pasting because you're bound to miss the original object by even a couple of pixels. So after you do that, you select the duplicated object, make sure it's on top of the cookie dough. That's how you cut cookies, right? And select the dough and set clip. There we go. So let's zoom in here. You see it's precise and it will be because we use the duplicate tool. And it's going to find applications in a lot of places. So let's see if you download a badge. So this is here we have this little badge of uh, cowboy. So if I go right here and I release clip, this is going to release the clip. And I drag this right here. So we had this whole panda right here. We had this whole badger right here. And by using the set clip tool, we actually cut it off. So it's a great tool when you're designing badges because you will want to use it. This is not a very natural shape, this one right here. So your graphics are, need, are going to need to be clipped, right? I'm just going to undo that. Also, as we saw, this tool is non-destructive. And what that means is you can use the release clip to have your original objects back. That's why we had this, we had the whole badger here. So this tool is really helpful. And if you download um, older badges, you can find a lot of artwork hidden in these clips. So yeah, it's, I'm gonna see if we have any questions. Oh, hi, Justin. Hi. Okay. So let's see. The last thing we have to do is oh, right. So we are going to make the number. So I'm going to add 2020 here, just in case uh, we have nest next year also. So Marie actually suggested this to me. So you need, it's, I guess with experience, you have this sort of insight. So I'm just going to use this 2020. And we always use Comforter typeface for uh, any numberings or text that we use inside the batches, you can download the link to download this typeface is in the style uh, in the docs page itself. So you can always go there. Now, let me just, so if you see right here, we have a very unique way of numbering. So if you see, there are three layers. So this is the original number layer. There is a middle tone and then there is the darker tone. So what happens is if you zoom out, it gives it a sort of a 3D effect and it looks really cool. So we are going to see how we do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first reduce the kerning a bit so that it's squeezed together. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to use this tool right here, this is the fill bounded areas tool. So the shortcut is U. And you can see what color we have here. We have this color. I'm going to use the color picker tool to change the color that I have. And there we go. So now if you click on this tool, there we go. So what it does is it's, it sort of creates a bounded area with the color that you chose. 
Wow, Inkscape is exceptionally slow today. I think it's because I am also streaming side by side. That's okay. Okay, so we have this right here. And if I use this tool, I'm going to lower the selection. I'm praying Inkscape doesn't crash right now. Because I feel like it's going to crash. I hope not. So there you go. Yeah, so now all the bounded areas are beneath the text. So you have this sort of cool outline effect. And to get the third layer, I'm going to use this tool again, and hopefully it will be easier this time around. So select this. Mm. Yep, there we go. So it's, it created the outline for the whole thing because all of these were now touching. So if I bring it to the bottom, I'm going to save this because I think Inkscape is going to crash any moment now. Wow. Okay. This. And the last thing we do is change this color right here to white. There we go. Great. So you can play, adjust with, adjust the colors, the thickness, everything. Uh, and then after you do that, just group it all together. I used Control G. Yeah, there we go. Um, it. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Okay, and you can play around with it. Maybe you can change the color. I think this color, this one, I did not use the correct color. I think I should have used, okay. It's going to remove this. This one is going to work a lot better. So yeah, you do that. You play around with the colors. Um, you can even align this whole thing with the words. So I'm going to use the align and distribute tool again. And I'll select that. And yeah. So and yeah, you should fix that. And after that, just make sure the background is um, looks good, and then you're good to go. You have successfully completed your first batch, yay! But the thing is, it's not over. There is still a very crucial step, and I know we are almost out of time. But thankfully, we are about to be done. So this is the most important step, I would say, because even after you did everything correctly, if you don't export it correctly, it's going to be reviewed and it's going to be exported correctly. So it's not going to work if you don't export it correctly. So this is the final badge. Um, made a few modifications, changed the background a bit, and then we export it as a PNG, right? So what you have to do is you select page here, make sure you select the page because it's really important. We need to export it at this particular size, 256 by 256 pixels. If you export it as a drawing, which is the default option, what you're going to do is you're going to export everything right here. So if I do this, what's going to happen is, let's see, let me open this. And right. This is what's going to happen. You have this text also. So it's going to export everything that is on the screen. So just select the page, export, and replace. And there we go. We just successfully designed the first batch. And after you upload it to the ticket, you upload the PNG and the SVG so that if there are any changes to be made, uh, someone else can also do that, someone from the design team maybe, and then you are good to go. So, and also this is the badge that all of you can get right now. So if you go to the reception, you will find the link to get this badge. Ah, Marie, 
Oh, don't forget to save. Yeah, it's really important to save. Um, happens so many times that, <laughs> yeah, that Inkscape crashes. Wait, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? You can ask in the, the chat box right here and we'll do, yeah, I think that works. And if you want to ask anything, you can always uh, email me, contact me on Telegram. Uh, my username is Mira Goyal. Uh, -E oh, how do I design <laughs> join the design team? Well, <laughs> if Marie needs to ask that. Um, okay, so to join the design team, you can <laughs> you can join the Telegram group that we have. Um, this is the picture right here. I'm going to open the design picture right here. Make sure you sign up to the mailing list. You can introduce yourself on the mailing list and start contributing. This is the design picture, and we also have the Fedora badges picture. There we go. So yeah, the Telegram group I think is called Fedora Design, Fedora hyphen design. So you can look us up. I can put a link here if you want. <laughs> well, not Marie, but if anyone else wants. Oh, what link? Wait, I will drop the... Oh, there you go. Thanks, Justin. Uh, I, I, I hope I helped and I can get help you work past that. Uh, trouble point. I know even when I started initially, there was a lot of um, problems that I work that I had to work on. I would not export it correctly. I would not save it and Inkscape crashes sometimes, especially since there is a new version now, Inkscape 1.0, I think. Oh, right, the Pidgeot link. This is the Pidgeot one. I'm going to send the Fedora badges. You can find all the open issues here. Maybe we will see you in the contribution part also. Um, yeah, so does anyone else have any more questions? Yeah, okay, so just a reminder to get your Nest badge. Um, let's see, what if I duplicate this? How do I present my screen? We have three, oh, we actually are over time, but I'm just going to quickly show how to, yep. Oh yeah, you can see my screen. So this is the reception. You go down here, you can grab your nest with Fedora attendee badge here. Oh, I already have the badge, but you, if you click it, you, We'll see, you can claim it. So this is the final badge. I hope it opens here. Yeah. See? Okay. Great. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, oh, thank you, Sayak. I hope it was informational. I mean, I even I am a newbie. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. I couldn't have done it without your word of confidence. Thank you so much. And um, I'll join the other sessions now, and I hope I see you guys there also. And there's a workshop, uh, oh, there's a badges workshop session, also badges design workshop in about three and a half hours, 11.30 my time. So that's three and a half hours. Okay, so I hope to see you guys there. We can make our own badges, and hopefully I will see some of you as a part of the design team also. <laughs> Thanks everyone, thanks for coming, bye-bye.